Well, it's a delight to have on BPN Radio today a young lady that I've known since she was eight years old, Bethany Bilbo. And Bethany grew up singing on the stage of her local church at the age of 10, delivered her first sermon at the age of 14, along with her traveling ministry as conference speaker and recording artist. She also serves as worship pastor as well as youth pastor at two church campuses in South Louisiana, Praise Church of New Orleans and the Miracle Center of Gonzales. She also is founder and director of Judah Force Hip Hop Dance Crew for youth and young adults. Bethany Bilbo is an ordained minister of the gospel and is the 28-year-old daughter of Pastors Garland and Beverly Bilbo. At the age of 15, Bethany's first solo album was released, and she's currently working in the studio on her new music project. You've just heard her uh, brand-new single. We're going to play another one of her songs in just a moment. But, uh, Bethany, it's uh, a delight to have you on the broadcast today. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me today. I'm I'm honored. Well, I've known you for a long time in your family, and we sure love you guys. And and I invited you on today because one of the hot topics uh, in the Christian world, particularly among uh, young ladies, is singleness. And uh, there are so many... Uh, young ladies out there that are so worried that they're not going to have a husband, that they won't have a life without a husband, and wondering if they're going to get married. And and we're seeing uh, some of these young ladies make bad choices because they rush into a marriage because they think that uh, the most important thing in their life is having a husband, which I know is very, very important, but it's it's a major challenge. So here you are, a 28-year-old single young lady, and uh, uh, I think your life is still full, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It definitely is. Um, you know, that's that's definitely a topic that I love to share about, being that I am single. I've never been married before. And, um, you know, it's uh, definitely an issue that a lot of young women face, especially in the body of Christ, um, because we make a stand for certain things, um, you know, and, I feel like God has spoken to me, well, I know he spoke to me about this years ago, about, you know, a lot of people look at the title of single, and they kind of accept it like as it's like a curse or something. And God just showed me, like, years ago that it's a season. Single, being single is a season, and, you know, there's a beginning and an end to every season. And we have to focus on what are we to do in this season? And, you know, if, if right now our season is single, that's our opportunity to do everything that we can do now in pursuing the call of God on our life and doing things that we can do, like, you know, write that song, write that book, because once we're married, our, our season changes, and it's no longer about us, but it's about us and our spouse, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so what what counsel would you give uh, these uh, single adult uh, young ladies who uh, are just uh, very anxious about uh, their life, not having a husband, how how do they come to a peace about that? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, for, for myself, um, definitely there have been times of, you know, experiencing loneliness, but I have to stay focused on um, on the call. That's, that, that God has placed on my life and staying focused on the fact that, you know, during this season of singleness, um, you know, to keep pursuing the kingdom of God, you know, the, the Bible says, seek you first the kingdom of God, and then all these things shall be added unto you. And once it becomes revelation to us, and, you know, I definitely, it's, it's very important to surround yourself with believers, you know, and everybody who goes to church may not be somebody that we need to hang around with, um, you know, because people who go to church, they're, everybody, they're people that are dealing with hurt, dealing with pain. We need to make sure that we're surrounding ourselves with strong believers. And so I would say to, you know, to single women who may be struggling with this is that, you know, relationships is, is a very um, important thing in our life and who we align ourselves will determine where we're going in our future. And so, 
being trying to um, to fill the void of loneliness by hurrying up and getting into a relationship is, you know, it may seem awesome, it may seem great, but some, it's not always the best choice. And we, as Christians, as believers, need to, you know, just just to pray about it, just to pray, God, you know, I know that you put me in this season for a reason. Uh, you know, for whatever reason, God, no, no matter how long or how short this, this season may be, I know that there's a beginning and an end, and I want to fulfill and seize this current season that you have in my life. And um, so that's, that's that's the thing is just staying focused. That's what, I, that's what I, have, I have had to do. You know, there was a period of time where I, I haven't even been on a date in five years, you know, yeah. just because of realizing it was a choice yeah. of realizing the fact that, you know, God, I want. I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to, you know, align myself in the wrong relationships. I want Your perfect will in my life. Well, that's it's it's evident, Bethany, that you have uh, you have filled your life with a with a lot of um, uh, ministry activities and uh, working with young people. And I, I, I certainly believe that the mistake that so many young ladies make is they spend all of their time pursuing a husband instead of pursuing the will, plan, and purpose of God for their lives and exercising all of those gifts and talents and abilities they may have, like you have the uh, uh, the ability to preach, uh, to work with young people, to record, to sing. And I think that God has uh, given you a lot of privileges there. So, you know, pursuing, uh, just pursuing a husband, I believe, is, uh, it could be a major mistake. I do believe that God has, uh, has already assigned a husband for you and Isaac for you and every other young lady that is listening to this broadcast on this Saturday. Do you believe that? Uh, yes, sir. I do believe that. Yes, sir. I totally agree. And uh, so, in preparation for uh, for a husband, what would you uh, talk to young ladies about? How to keep themselves pure? Maybe any boundaries of their dating? Um, what uh, what? I mean, you're not an odd person not having a date within five in the past five years because I understand that you're pursuing God. I know that you're a beautiful young lady, but you're pursuing God, and I know that God is going to bring that special Isaac into your life. But what what would you share with uh, young ladies about uh, preparing themselves for their husbands or keeping themselves pure for their husbands? Yes, sir. That's that's a um, that's a that's a great um, thing to to talk about. Um, you know, I believe that, you know, purity in the Bible, it talks about purity, you know, and of course we all, we can always pull from the Proverbs 31 woman, you know, and, and, you know, one thing that, um, really came real to me, um, with being single and being a single young woman is that, you know, it, the Bible states that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. And that implies that to me, the way that I interpret that scripture, that us as women, you know, have to believe that the man is going to come and pursue us, and that's how God intended it. I think our generation has kind of perverted a lot of things and to where that the women have become more aggressive. And I don't believe that that's the way that God has intended for that to be. Naturally, a man is a hunter. And um, I believe, just as, you know, you were sharing, um, also that God has the right man for us. And you know, um, he's going to find us. God's going to bring it in the right time. And that's where our trust in God has to kick in is because we need to be so trusting in God and knowing that, hey, everything is going to work out. It may not be the way I think it needs to be or in the timing, but, you know, it's, um, but it's going to work out. But yes, uh, you know, abstaining from, you know, from things, you know, um, abstaining from sex. You know, I, I'm 28 years old, but I'm a virgin, I, and it's by choice. You know, that there's been opportunities, but I've made a stand. And that's not to, to boast about that by any means, but it's to say that, you know, we have to um, have such a passion and understanding to protect our calling. And, hey, you know, if people have made mistakes, it's okay. God forgives, and there's always a second chance, you know, and God can kind of can renew us and all of that stuff, but we need to protect our calling. And, you know, if our body is the temple, you know, and if he, he is living in us, 
He is, you know, and we're housing Christ, you know, the Holy Spirit, it lives inside of us. And yeah. so we have to protect that. We have to protect our temple. And, um, you know, in our society, in our generation, even in the church, there's a lot of people who think nothing of having sex outside of marriage, but we can't forget that that's clearly stated as a sin. And there's also things like, you know, as women, you know, we need to, to dress you know, modest. It doesn't mean we have to, you know, not look attractive or cute, but definitely, you know, we don't want to cause a man to sin, and we don't want to... My dad always told me, and I think this is hysterical, but very true, that whatever you catch a man with, you got to get him with, you know? I mean, you got to keep him with. Whatever you catch a man with, you have to keep him with. So if we're using and, you know, dressing seductively, then, you know, it, it, we have to maintain that, and of course, we all know the laws of gravity you know, yeah. will not always be the same. And right. so, um, you know, there's just that's just what I believe. You know, I believe that God's going to send the man into our life. That, and when we trust God, we just you know, and it's hard to trust God, especially when people in our lives have have failed us. Sometimes there are situations where it's easy for us to trust the Lord, and there's other times where it's fine. We have to make extra effort in order to trust Him just because it's human nature. Um, but, you know, I believe that it really also falls back on, you know, trusting in Him and believing that God is going to take care of my future. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you. Declare the Lord a plan not to harm us, not to withhold us of our desires. You know, and if God placed that dream inside of us to get married, then, hey, you know what? I believe that we're going to get married because He's, he will give us the desires of our heart. It's just in God's perfect timing. Yeah. So, uh, well, I believe that. And so I, I, I know that young ladies should not be anxious. Not everybody is yes. getting married now when they're 21 years old. And I know that, yes, uh, I know that uh, people always have an opportunity at the right time. So I want you to, uh, I want you to say, uh, I want you to say a prayer for uh, the single young ladies that we're focusing on today here on BPN Radio, and I just want you to pray for them right now. Yes, sir. Well, Holy Spirit, we just we just thank you, God, for the, for the, I thank you of all for the opportunity that I have to share and to speak to these young ladies, God. And I know, God, that as you have shown me and you have caused the revelation, God, of your word and of your promises to become so real to me, God, you can do the same to each and every one of these young women. God, that I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would help us, oh God, to to, to abstain from, from things, oh God, that are pressures of this world, oh God, that you would help us to know who we are in you, God, and the promises that you have for us. God, I just thank you um, for encouraging us. God, I, I just, you know, I ask that your Holy Spirit would just give us peace. It would comfort us. God, and we just thank you for encouraging our spirits today. God, that, um, that we know, God, that you have our future perfectly lined up. God, and we don't want to put our hand in it and mess any, mess, mess any of that up. God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have called us to greatness. I thank you for the call that you have placed on each and every one of the young women who are tuning in today into their life. God, in the purpose, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the dreams that they have, God, and that they will come about. God, and I thank you that even in the moments of loneliness that we can reflect on your word, that we can reflect on your promises, God, and the future that you have for us, Lord Jesus, and we can find peace in that, peace in you, God. God, and, and we know that we're not fighting this situation alone, God, but we have you fighting on our behalf, God, and we just ask that you would help us, God, in weak moments that we can just trust you. When we feel like there's no hope, when we feel, oh God, that there's no uh, turn in our situation, God, that we can just relax and just trust in you. God, and we, we just, I just give you praise. I exalt you. I thank you that you will show up in our life in a mighty way. God, make yourself real to them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Bethany. It's a wonderful prayer. And uh, uh, I would highly recommend uh, anybody listening, if, if you, they would like to invite you to minister in their church or their group, how, how, and, uh, or purchase your music, which we're going to play another one of your songs. How can they, how can they reach you, Bethany? Yes, sir. Um, well, okay, well, I have um, on my website, 
It's uh, BilboMinistries.com. It's my last name. Um, B as in Bravo. I, L as in women, B as in Bravo, O. And especially uh-huh. if you're familiar with the Lord of the Rings, you can you know my last name. <laughs> and so, um, also, you can email me at Bethany at com. Um, I also have a YouTube channel uh, that people can check out uh, clips of my messages, parts of my music project I'm putting together. I have some clips on there. Um, also Facebook and Twitter um, and there's uh, basically all forms of social media I'm on, um, which all of those are great ways to communicate with me. And uh, yeah. Well, that's very good. And you have, uh, you've been a tremendous blessing today. And I know ministering to a lot of young ladies, you brought hope and encouragement and some wise counsel there. And, uh, tell us about your music project because we're, we're about to let you to let you introduce another one of your new songs. What's happening with your music? Yes, sir. Um, okay, so last year I, I began working with a brand new project, and it's special to me because it's all songs that I've written, and it's the first time I've ever done this. And so I've just been kind of walking it out. And um, anyway, but this song that we're about to go into is called "You're Welcome Here," and I believe that you know, just in our worship and our quiet times with God, that you know, sometimes He just wants to know that He's welcome into the into the room, into our lives. And so that's kind of, that's where the heart of, in which I wrote this song is just telling the Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. And I want you in here to just, you know, to come in and take away all my fears, all my pain. You're welcome into my heart. And so that's, um, that's kind of the, you know, the heart in which I wrote this song. And I'm real excited about this project. I've only, so far, I've got three songs, um, uh, that are, that are, excuse me, two songs on iTunes. The third one's going to be up actually this weekend, and so which is this one we're going to go into. And they can be found on iTunes. Um, and so I'm just kind of, as I'm recording these songs, I'm putting them on iTunes um, as I can. Uh, and so anyway, so I'm really excited about it. And I love this song because it's the, it starts off with worship, and then it kind of concludes, it builds up into this gospel, um, soulful sound. And so I hope everybody uh-huh. enjoys it, and it's a blessing to them. Okay, Bethany, you introduced your song. We're going to play it. Thank you for being on today. God bless you. Thank you. Okay, bless you, too. Okay, you introduce it, and we'll play it. Okay, right now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, here is your welcome here. Hope you enjoy it.
Thank you.